What's up guys and good morning. We are here in South Carolina hanging out with Chachi Bachi, the one and only. What up buddy? Um, and yep, today starts the adventure. We're headed out to Florida, Tampa area. Uh, I flew my family down there for a vacation and the weather was marginal coming home. So I had to rent a car and drive eight and a half hours home instead of flying two. So that is what it's like being a VFR only pilot. Um, that's coming to an end soon. But here we are, um, it's a week later, I'm going back to Florida to get the plane. My stepdad's on his way here. He's just coming along for the adventure. We're gonna have lunch with my sister, hopefully when we get down there, hop on the plane and fly back. Should be clear skies um, and stiff crosswinds up there today. So um, come along, peace. Where are you? 119.9. All right, there's our approach frequency. We'll use that to get flight following after we get out of here. Taking off, 3 2, straight out, out of the pattern, right turn to the north on course. Stay below 3,000 initially, then below 6,000 till out from underneath the class Bravo. We should be good. Engine instruments are looking good with our run up when we get out there. We are already charging. Okay, Everything looks fine. Um, 711 Whiskey, could you guys move up for just a little bit for us? Give it up. Roger that. We'll get out of your way. Thank you. All right, guys, welcome back to the cockpit. Um, we'll get into all the details after we get in the air, um, but we are here in Tampa, Florida, rescuing this airplane. We'll get into how how we had to leave it here. This is my stepdad, Dale. Dale, I got cameras all over the place. Hey, how you doing today? <laughs> um, he's just along for the ride. He likes to fly, so. Why not? Yeah, we'll figure, hey, let's go to Florida. So we flew commercially here to get this plane, um, and we'll get into that whole story when we get in the air, but for now, it's checklist time. So, um, Positive control system, we'll check that when we get going. Tampa North, Centurion's on a left base for 3-2. 1,700 RPM, right there. Pressures look good, RPM is holding nicely. We're charging, fuel quantity indicators, everything down here is in the green. Suction's in the green, we're going to go two left. There's a good drop, two right, it recovers. One left, one right, it recovers. A little more RPM. So cycle the prop, we're looking here. There's one. Second time, there's two. Now I watch oil pressure, and there's three. Prop comes back to full. Power back, relean. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, ammeter su suction was good. Left and right mags, prop, 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 and throttle were good. Uh, flight controls still free and correct. I checked them already. Stabilizer trim. I just set it. It's good. Fuel selector handle. I want to be burning off the left tank. Actually, flaps set for takeoff. Are right, we gonna taxi down there? We're going to use the whole runway. All right. Good plan. Nothing more useless than altitude above you and runway behind you. There's another piece of that saying, but I don't remember it. Oh, and fuel at the airfield. Means bring it with you. Oh, fill yes. up before you leave. <laughs> <laughs> and Tampa North, uh, Mooney 271, we're holding short at the uh, first taxiway for 32. Tampa North. Okay, mixture prop, cow flaps are good. Power boost is closed, electronic fuel pump, bring that on. We get going. Strobe beacon, nav light landing, and seat belts are good. Um, door is good. Centurion's clear of 3 2, Tampa North. Okay. It's our runway now. Pilot window retraction lever is clear. 
expect the engine to die and take off when it does. Find a place to land. By a glance back here, and I don't have airspeed after checking, checking these instruments. I know something's wrong. We have a short runway. So the second I look back, if I don't have airspeed, we are stopping. And Tampa North traffic, Moody 2711 Whiskey, uh, taking off runway 32, uh, departing off to the north, Tampa North traffic. Okay, fuel pump coming on, make sure you're coming full rich. Ready to go? Yeah, oh yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> okay. The bumpy one? Yes, it's a bumpy All one. Alright, kind of looks like it from here. We're doing short field. So, All right. uh, full power here. Off the brakes, full power. Pressures are good, RPM look good. Engine instruments are in the green. Air speed's already alive. There's 65. I'll rotate. Hold it off. And Tap the brakes. There's a positive rate. Gear's coming up. Gear's up and locked. And now we pitch for 120 miles an hour. Everything's oh, looking good. You're good. You're good. I'm looking for birds and traffic. Oh, I love it. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> All right, there's 300. Flaps are coming up. Okay. There's 400. I talk to myself even when you're not yeah. in the cockpit. <laughs> There's 500 I, feet. 25 squared. Come back to 25. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There it is. And Tampa North traffic. Mooney 2711. Whiskey departing off the upland runway. Tree 2 headed out to the north. Last call, Tampa North. Okay, now we just got to be careful to stay below 3,000 feet because we're underneath Tampa Bay's Class Bravo airspace. Don't want to bust that. Right. Bring the fuel back a little bit. 13 and a half is what we want. So we're going to climb to 2,500 feet for now. That's what I feel comfortable with. All right. Works for me. Gives us a 500 foot buffer. Where are we at now? 1,000. That's fire out there to the right. Yeah, you see how it stops too? Yep. Nope. We're going to climb above that. that oh, we'll be above that? Yeah, it'll okay. be smooth above that, probably. Well, I mean, it's smooth here. These bumps right. are nothing. Yeah. 1,200. Everything's looking good. Fuel pump's coming off. Landing lights off. That's it. It's a nice, easy, low-power cruise climb. Alrighty, so... Just departed out of Tampa North. And we'll get into the story before I get um, flight following from approach, because otherwise they're going to be talking to us the whole time. So, we... My wife, my kids, and I flew down to Tampa um, for New Year's, and the whole family came down. My sister lives down here, Bird. My sister lives down here, and um, we all decided to meet down here for New Year's just to have a little family vacation. My cousins came down. I haven't seen them in a while. Rented an Airbnb. Had a great time. Um, my wife doesn't like road trips, so she was excited about the trip because we could fly. And it is a seven-hour to eight-and-a-half-hour drive, depending on traffic, or a two to two and a half hour flight depending on winds pretty much so really easy flight down here we had gorgeous weather um, and our flight home weather when we left was looked good so I was like let's try it knowing that it might not work anyway it rolled around and it was on the fence so the weather was good but the cloud cover was questionable it was we did, I couldn't tell if it was going to be overcast when I got home um, it was it was too many questions too many questions for me to take off with my wife and kids in the plane that was that was the deciding factor I was like well I could do this and be safe um, but I might not make it home if I get a hotel something like that if it was just me flying I, I would have done it for sure um, but it was not just me flying it was my wife and kids so I said nope and we rented a car and drove eight and a half hours back home. And now, of course, me and my, my stepdad, Dale, here, got a commercial flight down here. A, cheap for me. Dale somehow paid double the price yeah. for a ticket. <laughs> I went, just helping support the airlines, you know. <laughs> yeah. We flew down here on Silver uh, Airways, as you guys saw in the beginning of the video. There's 2,500 feet. We're staying here. Um, I was excited about it because it's like a, a prop plane. It's kind of different from what you're used to flying. And um, yeah, I was just excited about it. So, But my ticket was 68 bucks, and Dale somehow paid 120 So <laughs> we don't know how that happened. But, and their customer service is a little lacking, Yeah, we'll say. But, Everybody on the phone was nice, but they couldn't figure out why it didn't work. Yeah, and they were unable to refund him, which doesn't make too much sense either. But, hey, they were going to give me a full bag to take. Oh, there you go. The bag. 
free checked bag, even though we we're coming here for less than one. <laughs> um, but anyway, when I when I got on the plane to come down here to fly, I knew that that was a possibility. I knew anytime I go anywhere as a VFR only pilot, um, I knew that I know that I might not be able to make it home, right? Based on legal weather conditions. And that day that we drove home was beautiful. I could have flown at VFR the whole way home. Um, and certainly could have made it IFR. Even before I took off or before we drove and I saw the weather all day, I knew it would have been a perfect IFR day to fly. Um, it was gorgeous up there. I looked at the plane, a lot of planes flying. Um, per perfect IFR flying. Would have maybe had to descend through a cloud layer, a small one, but um, very, very doable for, um, you know, a low-time IFR pilot. So, but that's, like I said, that's part of it. With flying VFR, you have to be okay with but not flying, right? This is what everyone talks about, get their itis where it's like you want to go um, so bad and you take off into conditions you otherwise wouldn't just because you want to get home. Um, so this whole mistake, not mistake, this whole decision not to fly home ended up costing me like 450 bucks. We calculated it, right? Right around yeah. there. Plane tickets. Well, hey, look, here we are. Yeah. Having fun. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> worth, worth And we made it home safely. I knew if I drove my, my wife and kids home, that we'd make it home safely. So that's really all I cared about. Oh, we got a guy uh, 300 feet above us, dead ahead. So I'm going to stop my climb and just hold it here for a second. Guys, they below 6,000 here anyways. Okay. So, you know, it cost me 400 bucks, but it was, it was a no-brainer for me. Um, on the fence, it was like, we're not even going to risk it. I'm not taking the chance with them in the cockpit especially. So... You know, that's part of flying VFR only, is you've got to, you know, the most important important piece of safety equipment is your credit card, right? You've got to be willing to either get a hotel and stay an extra night, or rent a car, do what you got to do. Still happy with my decision, and like I said, like Dale said, hey, got a fun yep. day out of it. We're flying, you're having a good time, so. Yeah, I got something to do today. Otherwise, yeah. I'd be sitting home going, ah, what should I do today? Exactly. <laughs> So yeah, that's the story, guys. Um, VFR only pilot. This is the life of VFR only pilot. I am in my IFR training. I'm getting serious about it now. Now that I got the plane fixed and back and ready to go, um, I'm gonna schedule my written exam for two weeks. I've been studying like crazy for that, so I'm excited to get that going and get that IFR certification, and then move right on to commercial after that. So that's the goal. That's the plan. Um, yeah. All right. So let's switch over to approach and get some some help here. Going home. Okay, climbing through 5,000 now, so 1,000 feet to go before we hit the Bravo, but we'll be out of the Bravo in a second. And we're about 30 miles northeast. Tampa approach, good afternoon, Mooney, 2711, Whiskey VFR, request. 2711, Whiskey, the Mooney, uh, what's your position now, please? Uh, climbing through 5,200, we are 30 miles north-northeast of Tampa International. 11 Whiskey. Uh, we should be right outside the Bravo now, unless you want me to stop one on Whiskey. Alright, 2711 Whiskey Squad 0101, what's your destination? Uh, 0101, we're headed to Mike Kilo Sierra, I'd like to go there at 9500, one on Whiskey. Alright, one on Whiskey, maintain VFR 5500, traffic. Maintain VFR 5500, buddy 27, one on Whiskey. Alright, November 2711 Whiskey, v said Transponder Squad 1473. 1473, Booney 1 1 Whiskey. And November 1 1 Whiskey, you can climb the quest down to 9,500 on course. Up to 9,500 and on course, Booney 27 1 1 Whiskey Bay. So all I'm doing here is watching my fuel flow and maintaining 120 miles an hour. This is the most important thing. 120 in the climb. Um, whatever um, climb rate that gives me, I don't care. Just maintain 120. And then a bunch of my engine instruments. Blade turn on there. Fly heading is 090 to intercept the final approach course. This is my autopilot up here that I'm just trying to tell the plane where to go. 7791 Yankee Squawk 6671. Oh, climbing through 8000 now. November 2711 Whiskey, contact Jacksonville Approach 118.6. 118.6, Whiskey 2711 Whiskey, yep. November 34 Romeo Alpha, traffic no factor, just traffic to Eddie about the clock. One mile northwest bound, altitude 6,600. And approach, good afternoon, Mooney 2711, let's see, climb at the 8,300 for 9,500. Number 2719, change to a 5 3 approved. Number 2711, let's see, Jackson, approach, name file, 3026. 3026, 1-1, let's see. 
All right, 200 feet to go, so here's the procedure for leveling out. Just keep an eye on it, eye on everything. Upon reaching 9,500 feet, I'm going to sink my altimeters. I trust this one more than this one. 9,500 feet, call that good. Push the nose forward. Stop the climb, let it speed up. I'm going to leave the power at full. Put the prop back one, two, three. 2400 RPM. Altitude, altitude hold coming on. That'll hold our altitude for me. Maybe. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> Gonna find itself real quick. Alright, cut to my checklist. Cruise checklist. Now we'll go climb first. All flaps and fuel pump are off. Landing light, power boost is good. Manifold pressure is good. Propeller is set. Mixture. Good for now. Cow flaps are closed. Cow boost open. Autopilot boost pump. Oh, good. Yeah, we got a 10 knot headwind. Nothing to do about it. Which sucks. Yeah, we're going 140. We'll probably end up going 146, 147. But we're only going 137 down here, so 144 and 137, so. Like seven miles an hour? Yeah, not a couple miles an hour, yeah. It's okay. What's the, what's this guy up there? That's my gear is not down. There's a red light. Don't land. And the green light comes on when it's locked. It comes on when I bring this down in here. And this is, there's a switch in here, see? Green light. Yeah. Okay. It also tells me if this is open, because you're not supposed to land with that open. There's a hole in the front of the plane that I can open with this, and it allows air to ram into the front of it and bypass the air filter and go straight in, so it's unfiltered air. But you get an extra inch of manifold pressure from it. And um, you can't land with it because there's dust down there, so you don't want to land with it open. All right, so just when you're up. ETA, two hours. Can't hear you. Three 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 two. Direct leopard. Five thirty one. Good. Number seven three five. Echo Juliet. You said I just looked to see what time it was. I got Kristen's message fifteen minutes ago, so we've been in the air for fifteen minutes basically. Yeah. All right. So now we can have some fun. Play with the flight computer. Decal. So target altitude, we'll say 1,100 feet. We want to descend at 500 feet per minute. And we want to be at 1,100 feet one mile before home airport. So right now, if we wanted to hit that airport, we'd have to descend at 73 feet per minute. But I want it to tell me when we get to 500 feet. So I'm just going to keep flying until that descent, because the descent angle is like this. Right, and as I get closer, the descent angle is going to come like this. And I want when it gets to 500 feet a minute, then I'll go down. It tells me. Right. Super nice. So you just go through. We're going to pass through Jacksonville's airspace, yeah, not necessarily pass the airport. We're going to go or does it take um, us right that over close to it. Yeah, that's Jacksonville. That's Jacksonville International. We're going to go right so over. On, on a direct flight, I mean, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I mean, that's that's our path at Magenta Line. That's the airport. That's the airspace around it at Magenta. But we're going to go over the top of it. See, it says ground to 4,000. Right. And this ring, yeah. this ring would just be from like 1,200 to 4, there it is. Yeah, 1,200 to 4,000. So we're going to go way over the top of them. And, I mean, we'll go right over the top of Jacksonville. That's the right. city right there. This will be cool. Can I move this, sir? Yeah. Where, where, will it show us on here? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there right there. Are. Okay. It's called own ship. Okay. And this one communicates with this. So if I cr create a flight plan in here, I can send it it'll directly to the panel, and it pops right up. Right. It's, it's the it, And if I change something here, it'll change something here. Number five, That's two, all integrated, eight, man. Go ahead. Yeah. Two miles. Oh, and I, all the traffic. That's what I use it for, mostly. Right. The planes around you. Yep. How far apart are those? But what, the airports? Yeah, those well, two. So watch, you go like this. 2.7 nautical miles apart. Oh, there it is. And at your current speed, it tells you one minute. Yeah, dude. 
It's the most amazing thing ever for a flight. Yeah. Literally this, that, my phone for backup for a flight. If all that goes wrong, I go out the window. <laughs> right, we're gonna, we should burn about 18, and 18 gallons. We could go almost 700 miles right now on what we have. Number 11 whiskey, contact Jack, approach 118.17. 118.17271 with you. Number 5 Echo Juliet, do you have the field? 118.17. Climb inspectors for an Probably. Get down to my signed altitude before I call him. <laughs> <laughs> before you confirm the number, you mean? Yeah, so he's not like, no, you're not. And approach, get up to new Mooney, 2711 with you, 9,500. Mooney, 2711 with you, Jack, for a telemeter 3026. 3026, but these cameras are going to die. Oh, really? So. Oh, uh, they don't make the whole flight? No, not even close. Uh, that, I could plug them in and they will, but the wing cameras are dead. Already? Yeah. So. Oh, I would have waved goodbye. Well, they're still going. Oh, I mean, the wing going? ones aren't. The tail oh, one will go for to two and a half hours, so we'll get that whole flight. Thank you guys for joining me on this one. If you guys like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram if you want to, all that jazz. Catch you guys in the next one. Um, stay tuned. I'll take you guys through all my IFR training that's coming up. I don't know when. Uh, we're going to get videos out as soon as possible, but um, you know, busy with life, so we're working on it. But thanks for thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace. All right. Then we'll just let them die. <laughs> <laughs>